This is me, the Undead Viking, and I have the undisputed pleasure of being able to tell you about this game right here. This is called Angel Fury. I guess technically Angel Fury, the battle for a human soul. And remember that name. Just remember that name because um, this is kind of cool. Uh, and I'm going to have a big, long talk in my final thoughts after I talk about how the game is just awesome um, that you may or may want to watch. I don't care. Uh, but um, this is a, a, a really fantastic deck building, I guess almost like a deck planning game. And, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll explain that in my final thoughts as well. This is like a, a that, that is a card driven war game as well um, between uh, 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 legions of angels and legions of devils, uh, you know, basically battling over uh, a single solitary mortal soul. And um, the game is 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 going to be produced amazingly. I mean, it's it's the same people, you know. It's 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 the uh, Daniel. I, I'm gonna totally <laughs> Daniel Frixelius, but. Just, I'll say, Terraforming Mars. You, you, <laughs> him. Um, well, one of the people uh, that, that, that helped create Terraforming Mars. Uh, and they, uh, obviously, the, the, the pedigree is there uh, for for the, the creation of a game. Um, but not only is this game just fun, and it is interesting, and it is, it is a very tight and dynamic um, battle. Uh, that doesn't. It also doesn't take too long to play, which is important, right? I, I and nowadays, I mean, I yes, there's times for the giant epic six-hour-long thing, but that's at conventions, and well, when is that going to happen again? But anyway, my point is, is that um, the game is fantastic, and if you take anything away from this, is that it is. Um, but I'm going to show you how the game is played. I'm just going to kind of go over the, the the core mechanisms and and kind of like the core ideas of the game to give you a really good uh, uh, grasp of, of how the game is played. Um, and then I'll come back here, as I always do. I'll give you my final thoughts. And, and then, like I said, I'm probably going to go off on a tangent uh, for a little bit um, about something that, I, that, that really uh, makes this game shine for me. But anyway, uh, here we go. Show you how to play. Okay, so this is Angel Fury, and this is a two-player game, and this is a prototype I was sent. So please keep that in mind as I show you these uh, how the game is played. I mean, this is a really nice-looking prototype. Um, you know, these are obviously 3D printed uh, pieces that represent both the angels and the demons that are going to be warring here. Um, and, and I should mention that these 3D printing, <laughs> I mean, I've, for as long as I've been doing these videos and getting prototypes, man, oh man, has 3D printing come a long way. I mean, yes, there are some that like had their, their wings break off, like that guy there. But like none of these fell off the stands or anything like that. They were they were impeccably uh, packaged and they reached me uh, in, in, in very good shape. So just a weird thing about 3D printing. But anyway, uh, this is a game of a, a war uh, between angels and demons. And they are not trying to, like, destroy each other. They're not, well, I mean, they are. They want to destroy each other because they're, they're, they're enemies. But um, what they're fighting over um, is this spot right here, technically. This, this spot represents a mortal soul. And you can see there's the tormented mortal soul on the board there. And um, for every round uh, that you can end with your units controlling the mortal soul, um, you will gain a, you can place a crystal uh, on this chart over here. And so like if, if, they, if, they, if this was around and it ended, um, the angels would control it and they would get that. And if it was the opposite way, uh, you would have you would place another, you know, like one on there. And the first one to get to seven, uh, will win the battle. Uh, there is other ways uh, to get that. There are um, these like kind of altars and summoning spaces. There's one right here. Uh, there's one right there. If an opponent ever controls one of those those, those locations, um, say like the demons control that at the end of their turn, they would gain an extra crystal here. But again, you're just trying to get to seven and whoever gets to seven is going to win. Now, there's some core concepts here that I want to talk about. Um, this is a deck building game, so all the action, well, the majority of the action is going to be fueled um, by a deck of cards uh, that you will draw. Um, 
each player, I don't have the, the opponents, uh, like the, the demons uh, board out just for the sake of being able to show you thing. But the demon setup board is, you know, pretty much exactly the same as uh, the angel setup board. And the players will use this to kind of chart um, exactly where they're at and what they're doing. They also have a, uh, a board over here that represents the different cards you have available to you. At the beginning of the game, you'll have a big giant deck of cards, this deck of tactics cards, and then you'll place four into this tableau. And then on your turn, you'll be able to choose cards. And like, you can wipe cards off of there. Obviously, like in many games where uh, when you purchase a card, you then replace, you take a card at the top and put it on there. Um, each person starts with a deck of 12 cards. Uniquely, well I shouldn't say uniquely, I've seen this in other games as well, but um, unlike a lot of other deck building games, uh, your deck doesn't grow. It's always going to stay at 12. So when you choose a card to, to buy and replace into your um, into your deck, you are taking a card and you're putting it on this spot, this lost pile, and you're dropping cards on there and then they're technically lost. Also, fairly interesting, is that yes, there is a discard slot for when you're gonna be used as you use cards and put those down there, but when you put them onto that spot, you, you're putting them face down, I mean not face down, you place them face up, one by one by one. When you run out of cards and you draw your discard pile, unlike most where you shuffle those cards up and then, and then drop, you just immediately flip those cards over to the other side and you can check exactly which cards you've played and which cards you've laid down. And so you can have an idea and you'll know what cards are gonna be first to play. So it, it opens up a, a whole level of strategy where Yes, you can play these cards, but you can't always be guaranteed that, like, um, like a lot of other games, when you when you buy cards, you don't know what cards are going to come up. You're going to shuffle them, see what you get. In this one, you're going to know exactly what cards are going to come up. So not only will you be playing cards for that moment, but you'll be playing cards also uh, for like preparation for when you cycle through your deck as well. Something that's very fun and very interesting as the game is played. All right, so I'll talk about the cards and how that works here in just a little bit. What I want to focus on the board. So each one of these squares is uh, a, like a nine space square. And so like you can see like there are these spots that have nine demons and nine angels like so. That is the maximum number that can be in there. You're going to also see that there are these larger units, like these units here. And I'll talk about those units here in just a little bit. Those are seraphs and or tormentors. Um, those are, they, they have, even though they're bigger, they have one hit point, just like basically one hit will kill them, just like these other ones that are on the board. These, these basically like your grunts, your minions, what have you. Um, but these are mobile spawning points. <laughs> so as they move about the board, uh, you can summon your your re reinforcements to an area that has one of your larger units. So that's kind of cool. Now those are a two by two, and they actually and so that you could fill up the board in like you can only add um, another five uh, to that board right there. So just kind of interesting. Uh, you have your, and then your finally you have your major. You have like a, a, a large angel, like like an angel leader, and you have a demon or a devil leader. Uh, and then those are a two by three, meaning at most you can have three minions with each either of those. And you can see um, this angel has those three. Now, when there's combat happening, and I apologize, I'm jumping around here a little bit. I just want to point out when combat happens, um, these guys get one die. These guys get four dice, and the big angels get six dice. So, like, and that's exactly the number of spots that they open, because this is a two by three, so two by three, it's six. This is a two by two, a two by two is four, meaning that the most dice you're ever gonna roll in a combat is going to be nine dice, because you're just never gonna, you're never gonna have multiple things attacking at once. You're gonna have one square of things moving into another square of things, and, um, well, technically, it doesn't have to be the whole square. You can move just some of them. But uh, but the most you could ever attack with is nine. Um, another thing you might have noticed that there's these like 3D terrain places here. Um, these are pools, like like uh, magical pools, and they are magical crystals. Um, there are two types of resources basically in this game. One are crystals, and crystals are used to upgrade your your uh, base over here. And there are 
uh, reinforcements, basically the, the 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 angels and the small demons that you can reinforce. Um, you can, if like you you if you lose these, you can purchase those as well, but they are not considered re reinfor reinforcements. It should be noted that if you ever do lose your big creature, you don't you don't lose. I mean, you're, the game's not over. I mean, you've lost a very powerful piece, uh, one that you know is very important, but um, you can still continue to play the game. The game is not over at that point. Um, and now, anyway, these 3D terrain places, you can see these are two by two locations as well. And so those mean, that means that only five units can be in a spot that has those, which is kind of nice because you're gonna be fighting over these locations because you're gonna want to control them. Uh, because at the end of your turn, if you control them, you're going to gain resources uh, from owning it. You know, the, you gain a crystal for these, you gain units from those. That's kind of uh, like a little bonus for having it. But also you can't just stack a bunch of things in there and, and just, just hold onto it and turtle up, you know, because there's a limit to how many units can be on that spot. Um, another interesting thing is if you ever have a situation where you move a unit into a space that has a resource, like moving like that, you just automatically get that resource by, by moving into that spot. And so, and that can happen multiple times, depending you know, how many moves and you know, how many actions you have. I can tell you about how that works here in a little bit. But when you move an end in a spot, like you could have like two moves and you could get two, because this is a pool that spawns uh, units, you could go there and you could spawn and get uh, uh, more demons or more angels if you happen to be an angel in those spots. So those are obviously very important as well. Uh, I mentioned that uh, these can are, are mobile spawning points. Um, also, the altars that you have here are spawning points as well. Uh, so if you you did lose both of your mobile spawning points, you could still spawn more things into the board because you have those set up for you. All right, so uh, I jumped around a little bit there, but I think you should have a lot of the core concepts down at this point. Uh, before the game begins, um, there are uh, these cards that will represent um, like your main angel, like your your or or your 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 main uh, demon slash devil, whatever you want to call it. And you'll pick one of these, and each one of these has some special abilities. It has access to some special cards and. In the case of the cards, what you'll do is you'll actually get them out of the deck and then those cards will replace cards in your deck and you'll place the other ones into the lost pile because they've been uh, discarded because you've got upgraded or different cards depending upon the person that you picked. Um, for this, I haven't picked a demon um, just because I'm going to show you using the angel side, but you, I picked Michael which is uh, the high commander. Um, Michael starts, and you can see down here, he starts with uh, 15 health. So I place a marker on the 15 health like that to show that he has 15 health. Um, every round over here, the income, he'll heal two. Uh, so if he ever gets damaged, he'll automatically heal two. He gets plus one, uh, like automatic follower every, you know, when he does his resource and he gets uh, a, a crystal each time. And then also like there's a thing where it says the, the starting with, he starts with three crystals. So I've taken the three crystals that he starts with. And then um, it tells you which cards you replace. So in this case, I got rid of one of my resource cards and got a flaming sword card instead. And then I got rid of my cavalry card and I got my voice of thunder card. And then his ability is that I deal plus one damage in all battles uh, that Michael is involved in. And that's like a permanent ability that he has. All right, so, uh, you know, it's other than um, if you've played deck building games or if you play like a card driven uh, like battle game, uh, some of this is going to be very, very familiar to you. Um, on your spot, on, on your player board here, there's a couple things I should mention. Um, there's a hand size uh, counter here. The maximum hand size you can have is six. If you want to spend five crystals, you can just do that on your turn and increase, spend the five crystals and just increase your hand size. Um, you have over here command tokens. You have sort of three command tokens. On the left hand side, these are unused command tokens. And as you do commands, and commands are what you use for the most part, to move your units across the board. Um, when you move, you just select a spot and, and you, you select the units from that spot and deciding how many you want to move and then you move them all. So in the case of this, you could say, I'm going to select the spot and if you did a move, you could like move them all forward like so into the, the neighboring square. Uh, movements can never be diagonal. Uh, they are always going to be orth orthogonal. Uh, just keep them in mind. And also, units that have moved 
are not allowed to move again. Uh, so um, just you, you, your, your, your ability to uh, move about the battlefield is very structured and can be slow, but there are certain cards that you can use that will speed up movement and allow you to move faster. And those will come into like the tactics of what you're doing. Um, it should be mentioned that if you do uh, summon, if you if you have like followers, and and like you use like one of your like angels, uh, like you 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 bring in followers to do that. And you can do that as, as if you have in your resources, like uh, like you have one, and you can just say, oh, okay, I'm going to bring this guy in. That's not really an action. That's just you get to bring them in because they are a resource that you've created. Um, maybe it's just the resources that you get, like Michael does at the end of each one of his turns. Maybe it's because you've moved into these spots, like so. Um, like you can do that. And also, as long as the creature that, um, the, like either the spawn point um, that was used uh, hasn't moved already you can move them again right away so uh, you know it's like so uh, monsters I shouldn't say monsters demons and angels that are summoned into the into it um, for the most part are a, are allowed to move uh, like right away after they they're, they're brought into the game so just something uh, that you should be cognizant about. Cognizant about. Um, but for the most part, like you're going to have um, like uh, several different types of cards. Uh, like you know, here I have a heal card. Um, here I have uh, new ideas, which uh, replace one to four cards in your strategic zone. I can just play that, and I don't like these particular cards. I can take them, and I can you know, I can um, you know, get more uh, like you know, start like replacing those out of the deck. Um, a flaming sword card. So it says in battle, I get to do plus one damage with the flaming sword of course i have to be in a battle for that to happen and then uh like here it has like a tactic card where it says holy fury play before battle one troop gets a uh, plus one sword and plus one like plus one attack plus one shield uh in this battle so those are things that you just can do and there's tons of those different cards and i can kind of go through a few of them here in a little bit one of the things i did want to show you though though if you do purchase cards so like notice i have this heal card right here um if you do purchase cards and you have a heal card you notice that some cards have what's like this one that says heal two on it and so if I wanted to purchase that card and I had the crystals to, to purchase that card and put it into my hand, um, what the only way I can get this card and put it into my hand is if I have the first heal card, which is this one right here. And in which case then this would then I would replace that card and I would get this heal two card and I'd put it right into my hand if I purchase that. Remember you have to pay the price of crystals to purchase the card. And then, of course, since I did that, then I've opened up that spot. I immediately, oops, took too many. I immediately go ahead and place another one down into that spot, like so. If I don't, if I didn't have that, um, like, so here is, let me, let me see if I can. So let's just see, like, here's this Reinforce 2 card right here. Now, let's say I really wanted that Reinforce 2 card, and I didn't want to wait for it to cycle back through, because they will cycle through as uh, the text cards. But this is a very large deck. What I can do is I can reserve a card. And when you reserve a card, you will um, pay the price for the card out of your crystals uh, that you have. You pay the price for the card and you'll just put it off to the side and you can, there's actually a spot here. I, I didn't make room for it, but there's actually a spot right there that says reserved and you can place it right there and place the under There's no limit to the number of cards in the, being the reserved and you can add those to your hand at any time. Now you can, if you want to, get rid of cards that maybe you think you're never gonna use in the game and you can ditch them. Like you really, like here, let's just say, um, well, actually this is actually works pretty well. So <laughs> there are there are two Seraph upgrade cards here right now, but like, let's just say you wanted this like healing touch card in your hand because you thought it was really useful right now. You pay the price to get that card and then maybe like you would say, you know what, I, I don't really care about this new ideas card. I'm just gonna ditch it and I'm gonna get rid of it. And you, you put it into your lost pile like so so um you don't have to you can even you can even get rid of like your original heal cards and stuff like that but then of course obviously if you get rid of a first version of a card then you are going to be unable to get the second card because you know you you've you've gotten rid of the predecessor card so there's not going to be a way for you to get that one on the end so it's it is like one of those things where you do have to just kind of decide you know as far as how the battle's going how everything's rolling uh in, in in the space out here trying to decide you know what's what's best for you but again you you have four cards or until you 
uh, get increase your hand size, and then you will go through your turn and you'll play your turn. Um, the biggest thing is that there's no um, set how you do it. You can you can do a command, you can play a card, you can play another card, you can do another command. You know, there's all kinds of things like that. Um, there's action. All the actions you can do. Uh, they can be done in any order you want um, until basically you run out of resources to do them. Uh, you run out of uh, you run out of crystals to buy more cards. You run out of resources to put onto the board. You run out of commands, oh, you know, by moving them all into the use section, uh, and then you can't do anything. As soon as you can't take any more actions or you don't want to do any more actions, then it'll be your opponent's turn to go. Um, another thing I should mention, the command here has these five uh, crystals there. Again, if you have five crystals and you want to purchase another command, you will buy a command. You do not put it in the unused section, though. You put it in the use section. So you'll be able to use the new command that you purchased on the next turn uh, that you go. All right, so all that is being said, how do battles work? Well, battles are, and I was a little bit worried. I'll, I'll be, I'll be completely until I asked, I was a little bit worried about how battles are going to work and how they're going to run because um, sometimes if you have a game with a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different things you can do, a lot of different cards you can play, um, if all of a sudden you get started into a big battle where all of a sudden it's just a slog, it kind of like breaks down and the game kind of uh, like it becomes almost like an own, own mini game if you will uh, and and you, you kind of lose the flow. But Thankfully, that is not the case with Angel Fury. Uh, this is actually, it's very, very slick. So, for example, um, if if the demons went and they and they moved and they said, "I'm gonna, I'm doing a command and I'm moving into this spot because I want to be able to attack these these angels and I want to take over that human soul. I want to corrupt that human soul." When the battle happens, the battle is the only time that that on your turn that it isn't if it isn't your turn you can play a card. So in this case, you know, like. If I was playing and I got attacked and I had this battle card, I'm like, you know what? I'm getting plus one damage in this card because I'm going to play my battle card like so. And I put that down. So that's the only time, however, that you can do that. You can play a card that when it is in your turn. And other than that, I mean, there's other factors as well. There's there's things like there are um, demons can have like archery attacks where they get to attack and then they aren't going to be able to be reciprocated. They basically get to shoot arrows into a, a spot. You know, so there's different things that there are. There is some ranged attack stuff that um, can happen, but uh, it isn't, uh, you know, like it, is, it isn't a major part of the game. Most of your combats are going to be these big slogs of, of these groups just uh, beating the heck out of each other. Uh, but uh, so when they move in, what it, it's pretty simple. Uh, what you're going to do, and once again, there's going to be cards that are going to affect these things. Um, that uh, like sometimes it'll say, oh, you know, it's like if you roll because these these uh, these dice. These dice are really cool, actually. Um, like the for the demons, they have a an axe and they have a blank, and they have like this circle, and they have a blank. Now for most combats, the only thing that's really gonna matter is the, the axes, or in the case of the angels, uh, the swords. That's really gonna be the only thing you care about. However, some cards that you play will say something like, oh, you know, for um, every, uh, for every uh, like circle you roll, you can defend against one point of damage, or things like that, depending upon the cards that you're gonna play uh, when you're doing the battle. Sometimes you'll have a situation Situation where like if they will have a card that says charge um, and, and if you have a charge you can just do one damage right away before the battle even starts so like you do a damage and then the person will have to remove somebody from the battle but anyway so you're just gonna roll a bunch of dice let me just see what I get here and so in this case it is one two three hits and that's not a hit because I just hit that and I knocked it over but you have um, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna have one two three hits and that'll do those and now the defender will go and they get six dice so let's see, remember I get plus one damage. So whatever I roll here, I'm gonna add one to it. Like so. Ugh, that was not, not, not a good day. So they would do three damage. Uh, so, and I would do automatic, I would do plus one damage because of my flaming sword. So we would remove one. And these are not, re you do not just take these and put these into, um, these go into like a pile here where they can with, you know, taking these spots where these pools are or getting your resources at the end of your turn, um, you know, that's how you get those back. That just kind of goes into like a dead pool over there. And then I do one damage uh, to, uh, 
So now we have a situation where there's eight on three. Now we both have a choice. Uh, the defender can choose to retreat um, as long as there is a safe spot for them to retreat to. Um, you in, And I shouldn't mention, if you retreat into a spot with a resource, you do not get the resource. You don't get that bonus. Uh, or you can say to the bitter end, right? And you can have another round of battle. Uh, but like, so let's say that we're in another round of battle. So uh, maybe because, yeah, fine, you can take it, but you're, I'm going to be able to attack you again after the next turn. So then they roll eh, eight. They're going to get more than enough hits to uh, kill my angels. Let's see. And it's still the same battle, so I get plus one to whatever this rolls. So I'm just hoping I kill some more of you. And I apparently these dice don't have the swords on them. But there are. They're there. But I didn't roll any of the swords. So I do one more point of damage, like so. And then these three angels would be destroyed. And then, you know, they would come in and they would claim that. And if it was obviously then at the end of the turn, uh, because they would control uh, the soul, they would get one of another point over on this spot. If you move into a spot, like if this was a, a resource spot and, and you moved into there, obviously you wouldn't be able to move um, like all those because of the fact that there's not enough space in that spot. But if you move into a spot that it's a resource, you then get the resource, obviously, just like you normally would for moving into a location um, that you get that. Um, and then it, uh, like, and it, but after all of your turn is done, uh, like, as I said, there's a resource phase. Um, and you can have multiple combats, obviously, because with, all, with your commands, you can definitely move into, but the combats are resolved immediately. Uh, you don't say, I'm going to use this command to attack here, I'm going to use this command to attack here, and I'm going to use this command to attack here. Let's go ahead and resolve those. You don't do it like that. You resolve each combat as soon as it happens. Um, so... Uh, the only other thing, like I said, the resources. The end of the end of the end of your turn, you get the resources of whatever your either your uh, your devil or your angel gives you, and then for each of these locations that you own, you know, so like if you own a spot that has a pool, you get you get a uh, you get to get one of your uh, basic minions uh, is like reinforcements, and then you get crystals for each one of the. Uh, crystal locations that you own. Uh, I actually I just realized I forgot something. I was going to show you one of these cards. So these are two seraph cards, and um, the seraphs and the tormentors. Tormentors are for the opposite side. Uh, seraphs are uh, the the ones as I said, the, the spawn points. And as I said, they're upgradable. So when you purchase cards like these, so like this one says, um, this seraph is a battle prayer, and it says uh, play one command to gain plus one damage and prevent one damage next battle with the seraph this turn. So you can use a command thing for something other than that. And here's resistant. Uh, your seraphs prevent one additional damage. Well, there's two card spots right here for your seraph upgrades. And you can, if, I'll just dig to the deck and find something. Um, you can, like if later on, like you wanted uh, like this serif upgrade instead um, you can replace those as well and then discard the one that you don't want so you do have um, obviously like different options and, and things you can do um, like there are tons of these cards though I should mention and and uh, if you you know, the, lots of different tactics and options and things that you're going to be able to take advantage of that are like definitely going to be something that um, each game you're going to end up kind of like depending upon because remember you only get you only get 12 cards in your hand um, and that's going to change and but a lot of times you're just not going to end up buying cards uh, because of the fact that like you just uh, you know they, they aren't going to fit into what you want to do they're not going to fit into um, the deck that you want to be using and remember if you can get your uh, hand size up to six um, every two turns, because there's only 12 cards, you're going to be cycling through those those cards quick and fast and quick and fast. And you're going to learn your deck very, very quickly. I mean, I will say this, in lots of deck building games that I played, I would just buy stuff to buy stuff, right? I was never a big guy to like, oh, I need to have two of this card and three of that card and what have you. Here, you can't play like that. <laughs> You have to pay attention to what you have, especially um, the cards that you're discarding and playing. You know, as you, as you put these cards into the discard pile, 
you have to remember that. And you can go back and look. And also you can go back and, and look and see what's in your lost pile as well. So you can remember what cards you've gotten rid of. Um, and so like maybe what cards are still to come. And for that matter, your opponent can go through this as well. As you play this game, obviously you're gonna learn um, each side's deck and each side's cards. And, and you're going to, that, that's gonna be valuable information uh, for you in, in by using those. But uh, there you go. I mean, that, that uh, in a nutshell, is the game. It is a. It is very much a tug of war, seesaw type situation. I I didn't know what to think of the theme right away. I I, I really didn't. Um, I, you know, I was. It was one of those things where I was like, you know, they, why 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 wasn't this just like a a you know a, a, a like a star gem or something, right? And and then these are spaceships flying around, and I and I kind of puzzled over that for a little while, but. Um, I'll talk about that in my final thoughts because the game the game is fun and I think the theme is really really inspiring so um, but I'll talk about that here in just a little bit <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I laugh because uh, like, like the game's already still set up right here and I almost dropped that on all of the 3d printed minis and like I said they probably would stand up I was so impressed with how well those 3D minis stood up to, from being sent to me from 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 the Europe. I mean, they, normally those things show up and they're like in 27 little pieces, and I'm like spending five hours with super glue putting stuff together. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, the game, the, the pieces that you're going to get in your game are not going to be uh, 3D printed. So that's all in. So uh, let's just talk mechanism-wise, gameplay-wise. Uh, presentation wise and then and then I'll dive further into it and you can decide if you're gonna listen to me wax philosophical about games and morality and whatever um, so uh, the game itself uh, I play a lot of um, what well, I played I played I pl when when the COVID wasn't a thing I played a lot of um, tactical miniature war game stuff my daughter and I and my son for that matter um, we were big members at the Warhammer store. Um, you know, I still have a few 2,000 point armies of, of a few things. My daughter's got a wonderful Seraphon army. My, my son's got a, uh, a corn army that, that, you know, we play Age of Sigmar. Um, and, you know, once the world gets back to normal, we'll go back, you know, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to have some fun. But I, I, there's an itch that I need to scratch. Uh, when it comes to those types of games um, that I just can't get. I can't get to those 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 itches uh, because of the fact that I just don't have the ability to play that. And, um, you know, I can't just play my my son and my daughter over and over again. It just it, it gets stale. I need I need like new challenges and things like that. So when games like this show up, two players, miniatures, tight, tight gameplay, um, you know, roll some dice, but not dice forever. You know, uh, I, I really enjoyed myself, and and my daughter enjoyed. We, that, that's why I played this game with. Um, played it many times. Uh, we really enjoyed the process of it. We really enjoyed the um, the the deck planning. And when I say deck planning, uh, because of the fact that you only get twelve cards, uh, because of the fact that most likely, um, relatively quickly in the game, uh, depending upon your strategy or your luck or what have you um you're going to be drawing six of those cards you know every, half the deck basically uh every round um you're gonna know what cards are in your hand you just because you just know you 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 know what you built your deck into and you know because you can look at your discards and you can see exactly what you're going to be drawing and you are going to be planning your deck not oh I'm I'm building a deck because uh, you know it just um, it just turns that way and it, it, there, there's a very fine definition there uh, and it rewards um, strategic uh, choices and 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 being able to have sort of an ebb and flow um, as far as uh, like recognizing what your opponent is doing. And, and knowing that you need to change on the fly and do what you want. And that's where those reserve cards really come into play. Um, having like multiple reserve cards, you can say, oh, you know, you've changed your strategy. Now you're a more mobile opponent. I need to be able to, I need, I need something that's gonna be able to fight against that. Or I see where you're going. 
um, you're, you're, you're going after my altar. I need to be able to defend that this turn. So I'm going to go through these cards that I've reserved, that I had the, the, the wherewithal to reserve them in the past, so that now I can present them. You know, so there's some definite cool little manipulations of, of, of your deck and your hand uh, that you can go through, which I, I really enjoyed. I, it just kind of opened up a different uh, world for me when it comes to these types of games. Now, I'm sure there's other games out there that use those, those mechanisms. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not a big deck building person. I don't go digging for these games. I mean, when, when they contacted me and asked me if I wanted to review this game, what sold me on it was the theme and the fact that it was basically kind of miniatures wargaming. And I shouldn't even say it's miniatures wargaming because that's going to immediately turn people off. They're going to be like, ah, oh, no. this is miniatures on a board that I don't have to paint, I don't have to put together, um, that are being uh, directed around the board through a, a, a deck building or a card driven atmosphere. And, and I really like that. But, I was, but the idea of it, the, 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 the battling, between uh, the, the the two, the light and the dark, um, you know, really, really uh, uh, enticed me. So um, the presentation is beautiful. Um, like I said, the 3D printed stuff I have right now is awesome. I can only assume that when the game gets published, it's going to look even better. So uh, you know, I, I just you know. I, I'm over the moon with the presentation of the game. Um, I love the theme. I love the way the game is played. I think it is challenging and fun. And like I said, it doesn't take too long to play. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, you know, you can, and you can have like a surprise finish. Like when you get to a situation where it's like, I got the soul, I got your altar. Uh, I, I, I pulled off a, a, a great gambit and, I, and I've got to seven you know, before you did. And, and most of the games come down really, really tight. Really, really tight. Um, you know, like, you know, one by one, maybe two points each. Um, so uh, it, it, there isn't a problem with, like, you know, yes, there's there's dice that you roll in the game. But the dice, um, <laughs> albeit the, the, the dice rolling I was at for the angel side, and that one was pretty awful. Uh, albeit, uh, you know, yes, sometimes the dice cannot fall in your favor. But there are ways to mitigate that through cards and through strategy and things like that. So I, I, I really don't feel that... Um, the randomness really affects it that much. So there you go. I mean, if you're looking for a fab, and the thing is, is I played this two player, right? But there's gonna be a solo game, which I read the rules for the solo game to look amazing. Um, and there, there's a way to play this four players and three players for that matter. So um, it, it, I think you're gonna be able to hit all like player counts one through four very, very well with a really fun game, really good mechanisms. And I think it's gonna be awesome. And it's gonna look awesome on your table as well. So. Now then, uh, that's my, hey, this game's awesome thing. Now, this is where I'm going to kind of, like, delve into, like, the theme a little bit. Uh, so if you don't want to see this, whatever. Um, so the theme of it, like I said, you know, it's like, it could have been anything, right? It's like, oh, you know, it's like whoever controls the, the Lonely Mountain, you know, make a Lord of the Rings type game. Or, as I said, whoever, whoever has the Star Jewel, you know, <laughs> make it about like little UFOs and spaceships flying around or, or, you know, just anything like, you know, a battle, like, you know, just like uh, whoever controls the command point or, or what have you. But the fact that they went to the trouble of saying, no, it's, it's, it's the battle over like one mortal soul, one single person. And there's even like a really cool comic. And that's what I kind of really dug when they sent me the rules. There's like this really cool comic about... Like basically these, 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 these tormenting demons, devils, like, uh, like waiting for this, this, this human to crack, waiting for them to, um, you know, like fall and 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 you know, you become corrupted, and they're waiting and they're waiting and then and then these these angels show up, and say that no, you know, not today, it's not going to happen today, and. Um, uh, and there's like a little standpoint and, and I, I don't know if they made it public or not, but it's But you know, I kind of read it and it was just kind of like, okay, I'm reading a comic or whatever But then I like thought about it for a while And it's 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 a wonderful Depending on where you stand on this, you know, whether you know, I'm not gonna say anything about beliefs or faith or anything like that, but it is a wonderful idea that like these the like if and when like when we as humans, as with with you know uh, these these mortal bodies that are traveling through space and time, um, 
that when we are confronted with the most difficult of times in our life, that there is this kind of unspoken battle being done uh, that we can't see or sense. But we are so important that, like, that each of us are so important that, like, um, these these metaphysical beings would 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 fight over our, our our mere existence. Now I realize that that's, you know, for most people hearing that, you know, it's a bunch of hooey or what have you. But for whatever it's worth, <laughs> I can't even believe what I'm talking about. This. I'm a man of faith. Uh, I, I I don't know what or who God is. Uh, or if there really is, I just I just think there's a reason for us all to be here. I don't think existence is happenstance. Uh, I think that like there is uh, some sort of grand cosmic design, and and our uh, interpretations of, of 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 God or whatever um, as they've changed over the hundreds of years, thousands of years is just our little feeble brains trying to wrap our mind around the divine which we just can't you know we just we just can't grasp that concept we just aren't we're just such a, a base creature and 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 you know that's just my belief um doesn't mean you have to believe that doesn't mean you have to agree it just whatever it just um it gives me comfort and it it just it it helps me under, when I wake up at three o'clock in the morning and start my brain wandering about my life and what I'm going, um, believing that there's something greater than me going on in the world um, brings me a great deal of comfort. And so when I found this game to not be about fighting over some weird star jewel or uh, this game wasn't about, you know, uh, hey, who can grab the Lonely Mountain or, or, or whatever, you know? Um, and the fact that it was something as stark and as, uh, I don't know, powerful to me, uh, that it was the battle over a human soul, um, I found that very endearing. And there's been lots of times when themes of games have been very, uh, the themes of games have been very, like, uh, fun for me. Like, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Cthulhu fan, so, like, I, I love, I mean, so when I play a game like Arkham or Horror, Eldritch Horror or something like that, I like that kind of man-was-not-meant-to-know mystery type of game. Um, there have been, like, you know, space games based on IPs like Battlestar Galacta, themes like that games like that that just the theme really hits me just because of this i, I like the the source material uh, that i'm playing with uh, dude imperium for that matter game that is uh, game of thrones game uh you know just the, the the source material the theme of it helps a lot but then there have been games um uh that the theme of it like has stuck with me um long after the game is over and, you know, games like Freedom Underground, for example. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, Grizzled. Um, uh, I can't... There's, there's the game about the opium trade. Uh, I can't think of it right now. By Cole Ware... Uh, Cole... No, Ware, what are you, you know what I'm talking about. Cole Whirly. Um, the long after, like, the game's been put away, and uh, uh, I've, I've just... I've, I've, I've struggled with the concept of the game and it's just had a profound effect upon me. And I know this may be kind of silly or what have you, but this game did it for me too. And, um, I guess I admire, uh, the designer's choice of the theme. Um, whether they're trying to be provocative, whether it is something, um, of a personal journey for them, whether it is just a, a, a dive into the idea of religion, um, you know, for them. I, I don't care. I mean, uh, I admire the fact that the, the, that the theme isn't safe and that the theme um, is taking a chance. Um, and uh, kudos. And, and this is this from a guy who never really cared for Terraforming Mars. <laughs> I'm the one. I'm the one. 
<laughs> right? Uh, but anyway, I'm no, you don't have to chime in and say, I don't like Terraformers either. Terraformers is an amazing game, and it deserves all the credit it is. It just didn't set my world on fire. But this one did. So really good. Really good game. And if you have any questions about it or anything like that, love to hear them. Um, if you want to have some big, giant, deep philosophical discussion, let's not do it on YouTube. <laughs> Let's shoot me an email. I'll be happy to talk to you about it there. But um, anyway, uh, as always, any questions, thoughts, whatever, uh, comments, let me know. Hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. Subscribe. Do your thing. Um, I'll be here. I'll still make this stuff. And uh, until next time, I'm the Undead Viking. Uh, this was Angel Fury. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.